Welcome to Young and Finch, the podcast made by Korean millennials. Hey guys, welcome back to Young and Finch.、Um, this is episode 36, and we're going to be talking about some movies, books, pop culture that has changed our views over the years. And of course, my name is Andrew, and we're here with Brian and Josh.、Mm-hmm. So, yes, sir. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not personally much of a book reader. And movies, I kind of watch it for purely for entertainment purposes.、Mm-hmm. And pop culture, I don't really have you know, anything that inspired me. Although, I will try to include some animes because I love anime.、Mm-hmm. But before I go into that,、uh, mm-hmm. maybe one of you guys could start off with the original like, movies, books, slash pop culture that would change your views. Do you guys have anything that stands out in terms of? Something that really shifted, like, I guess, your views and your thoughts and, or whatever, you know, something that just impacted you when you were growing up. Yeah, I mean, I got for anime, but. Yeah. I, I could start off with that. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, so without sounding cringy or <laughs> trying to be as candid as I can,、um, they're like, anime has a really. I guess that stigma where it's you know, coming from Japan、um, in Western society.、Uh, if you like anime, you're kind of viewed as a nerd, right? A weeb. Like a, a weeb. <laughs> like, there's some me- negative connotations, obviously, with watching anime.、Mm-hmm. And I, I, get, I get that. But、um, having said that, I think there are many aspects and scenes、uh, that shaped my ideologies and like, just philosoph- my life philosophies.、Yes. Interesting. Um, and I could give specific examples like、uh, within certain animes, like、uh, like a couple inspirations that I got from different animes were like Naruto, right?、Mm-hmm. Um, Demon Slayer, Hunter x Hunter. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. I mean, these are like really good animes, right? So, and、uh, on the other hand, some animes are just purely for entertainment, right? Like, I don't think I learned any lessons from watching Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> Right? It's just like literally just pure entertainment. It was just like one of the best enemies、yeah. I've ever seen, right? Yeah, yeah. But if we were talking about in terms of just lessons or things that shaped how I view life, right? Yeah, definitely like Naruto, Demon Slayer, Hunter x Hunter、mm. um, was like one of the few enemies that like I watched. Not only enjoyed it, but I was like, damn, like. Like、some of the characters there are so fucking swag. Like, <laughs> they're so much so, right?、Yeah. It's like, I want to be like them, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And I kind of look, I know they're fictional, right? But it's like the way they're portrayed in enemies makes me want to become a better version of myself. So, like, for instance, right, there's this、um, movie that I recently watched. It was, it was a Demon Slayer movie. Yeah. It's called Mugen Train. If anyone wants to watch it, it's like, it's rated really high and it was really good. Yeah. If anyone's into anime. But, anyways, like the, without spoiling it, the, um, one of the characters there, um, he, like, showcases. So he's like this flame type of swordsman kind of thing. Yeah.、Okay. Like, without sounding cringy, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> just candidly speaking. He was like this flame swordsman. We just lost seven listeners. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, he was like this flame swordsman and, like, flame, the flame image, right? Is like, Powerful, like strong. Yeah, yeah. And like, man, like this guy, this character was very manly. Like, he believes in his, like, um, he's very, like, so.、Oh, there's like this comment that I saw on YouTube regarding this scene. Let me just pull it up. Sure. Because it, it, like, like, if you're not into anime, it's very, very cringy. But, like, for someone that's into anime, like, like confident,、um, self confident. It's like, uh, not confident, like, like self righteous.、Um, Like, he was very self righteous, like, courageous. Yeah. And, like, willing to, like, he's willing to, like, shield the weak. All yeah. All that, like, all the very cliche things,、mm-hmm. but、yeah. just the way that it was portrayed in the anime was so. It was kind of like, it was like literally beautiful,、yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. And, like, it's someone that, especially the characteristics of this character, I wanted to model myself. Like, he, like, no complaints. Mm hmm. 
what it means to be a man, you know, refer- referencing our what it be- means to be a man episode. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, just like stuff like that. Um, it was very impactful for me, right? Um, yeah. Let me just see the yeah. comment. But um, while you're looking that up, I mean, like, yeah. like it's interesting that you mentioned that the anime has a negative connotation now. But I think that's changed a lot. I think anime has kind of become like low key cool, and everyone watches anime now, and a lot of people are kind of right. It's into low it. key cool, right? Yeah. Like you said, it's low key cool. It's not yeah. like hip hop. Mm-hmm. Like that's. I think that's. But, but then, like even in hip hop, there's like there's like rappers that like like anime, and like that's like that's it. like like Ski Mask is one of those guys I think that watch anime and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like Adesanya, the UFC fighter, that guy's a huge weeb, but like people mm-hmm. like respect him because of that. Like he's himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Flaming swords. <laughs> that reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like if you don't watch it, but honestly, like. No, no, yeah, it's cool, I, man. Like, I, it's. Yeah, it's I feel like, like nowadays, like there's not like one source of like inspiration or things that you know people draw out of. It could be you know, like anime or like a documentary or. Yeah, for sure. People even get like inspiration off like Instagram or TikTok or you know. I feel like there's like not one standard source of inspiration mm-hmm. anymore. It's very uh, broad. Yeah. And um, yeah, just whatever works for you, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like even out of Sonya, like, like I, I don't know. People might think that he's a dweeb or whatever, but I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, it's cool because he's a champion. <laughs> if yeah. he was like a weeb <laughs> and he was like a subpar <laughs> fighter, then people would be like, oh, this guy is a fucking nerd and yeah. he sucks. But he's like, kind of nerdy but he's also like sick yeah. so it works yeah. in his favor he's he's like the what and his nickname is the uh last airbender or something last style bender style bender yeah yeah and like you could tell by the way he moves it's like he's like trying to emulate those characters and yeah know, things like that and stylistically and stuff like that yeah that's sure. interesting though brian what about you have you had like what's uh something that kind of in a similar <clears throat> vein to like what andrew said like was there any like movie or, or book that kind of shifted in terms of like what kind of person you want to be or yeah you know like things about like bettering yourself and stuff like that uh yeah i think um like you guys already know this but like i'm very like avid fan of like personal development self-development books and things like that yeah um and uh i think one of the biggest well i guess one that i read recently is um it's called can't hurt me by david goggins um, oh, that sounds. What, what does he do? That sounds familiar. David yeah. Goggins is like one of the fucking hardest motherfuckers in this world. He's like a former uh, Navy SEAL. Like, oh, I seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a book by him. He used to be like a really fat, just like yeah. un- unmotivated. You know, just like living the day to day with no like intention of like goals or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And then he just decides to like join the Navy SEAL, and um, it, it talks about like turning his mindset around and how he's able to do like triathlon, like ultra marathons and, and all those things. Um, but um, yeah, he was just talking about like just the grind, you know, like not a lot of people are, they always want like the easy way out or whatever. Yeah. Um, they always want to do like the easy things. And, um, you know, and also like people don't hold themselves accountable. Like they're always like, like sometimes like, you know how the people say, oh, don't be so hard on yourself. Like, don't yeah. say all these negative things. But at the same time, like, you got to, like, look yourself in the mirror and, you know, just, you know, ask those hard questions. Like, if you're trying to lose weight and you're you're fat as fuck, like, you're not going to be like, oh, like, it's okay. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll do it tomorrow. Like, you have to be real and authentic. And sometimes you need to, like, light yourself on fire to yeah. actually, like, you know, move yourself towards that direction. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, I don't know. It's just that that book just helped me uh, just reshape my mentality a little bit. Like, you know, like embracing the, the grind, the uh, the hardships or like whenever I'm yeah. tired and, and whenever I feel like don't, I, I don't want to work out or whatever. Like, you know, I just draw a lot of inspiration from that book. Mm-hmm. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. It's like people saying like, yeah, like don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, that, that's actually so true. It's like I think society is kind of built- gotten soft in a lot of ways which Mm -hmm. you know with with good reason like you know sometimes being too critical can be bad for your mental health and whatnot but Mm -hmm. at the same time yeah it's like bro you got to be real with yourself like you got to sit yourself in the mirror and like be 
satisfied with what you're looking at and mm-hmm. you know what i mean like sometimes that's some tough conversations to have with yourself or tough changes yeah i think um for to kind of elaborate on brian's thing um of self-development right i for me when i like to self-develop like i'm kind of i have a lazy personality and like just my nature try to look for shortcuts or cut corners mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but as soon as i acknowledge to myself that the most effective and efficient way is to actually do it properly for the first time and then like do it like slow and properly which is the most difficult part yeah. mm-hmm. and really understanding the process is what makes you like get better in life mm-hmm. and i kind of like kind of learned that the most more natural way where i try to take cor- cut corners and that would fail first yeah. mm-hmm. and then try- and learn from that so mm-hmm. yeah, i don't know where i'm going with this but anyways <laughs> No, it's true. Yeah. And once you <laughs> realize that, like that just becomes foundational for everything, right? You just don't yeah, want to yeah. settle or like, you know, half ass anything. You want to yeah. you know, commit to things fully. Sorry. Also, I found the comment. That <laughs> oh, I was what was it? So this character's name is Rengoku. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this comment, and um, it says he's literally the ep- ep- epitome. Epitome. epitome? Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> epitome. Epitome. <laughs> Anyways epitome of masculinity and virtue this movie made me cry and decided that i need to be a better man a virtuous and a more masculine man rengoku is what every man should try to strive to be strong brave courageous faithful loving kind patient and preserving which i also felt yeah. watching the movie right so i was like yeah that's that's what i mean like i wanted to be like have the characteristics of this character yeah. because mm. it was so for me impacting I think that always but happened yeah. with me, like watching Marvel movies growing up and stuff like that. When I was like younger, I would watch like a superhero movie or some movie where there's like a really strong, um, right? What do you call it? Uh, like main character, and they attribute like such good characteristics of like being honest and genuine and caring, but right. also like self sacrificing stuff like that. And afterwards, I'm always like fired up to be like, I want to be like that. Like this is like back when I was a kid, yeah. right? And I'd watch like mm-hmm. Spider Man or whatever, and I'd be like. Like, man, he's so, like, you know, whatever, and I just get fired up, and then... But then the motivation always dies, because it's, like, a... It's mm-hmm. a temporary... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's temporary... Just a feeling. Yeah, it's just a feeling. Yeah, You're just chasing yeah. that feeling, but... Yeah. Yeah, I think... I think, like, animes um, are a better... They portray these influencing moments better, in my opinion, yeah. than movies. Like, like, especially, like, Marvel. I think Marvel's like super cliche yeah for sure but like you're a kid i I, mean, I understand yeah, that yeah. but like at this moment right if i were to watch a movie or an anime i would get more inspiration from animes because it's like mm-hmm. i don't know i i, I, don't, I don't i don't i don't i don't say relatable but i no actually no you're right i, I sorry i, I want to say relatable because as i'm growing it's like i look for things that i want to be more i, I don't know i don't know what i'm saying <laughs> No, I agree though. I agree. Like, uh, and I think anime and like, like they they are also so good at expressing emotions. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, and really right? like, it's like diving a, into yeah. like the emotional like uh, tension and like situations yeah. stuff like that. That character build up yeah. and all that shit. It's just I think it's different. No, for sure. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, what about you, Josh? Yeah, I mean, like I've had a lot of that too uh, in terms of like you know my identity and, and who i want to be and stuff like that i think a lot of that kind of i a lot of that inspiration came more so from people that i know uh, rather than books and media and pop culture like you know um like real life figures and stuff like that but mm-hmm. one book that actually did change a lot of my perspective was um this art this author named donald miller he has a new york bestseller called blue like jazz and he's uh it's kind of like a, he's like it comes from like a religious background he's like a pastor and stuff like that but uh, a lot of his books are kind of his perspective growing up in the church with like uh you know the church and religious people having like a very conservative and narrow-minded perspective where whereas like you know as christians they're called to love everybody and stuff like that so a lot of his books are like religious based but it's not they're not christian books right it's about him questioning the church questioning faith questioning god and a lot of these books like really dive deep into like fundamentally like like why are we doing this like it doesn't feel right and stuff like that so um a a couple of his books i read when i was like in high school and those books were actually really core in changing my perspective not on 
faith or Christianity, but in terms of like um, viewing other people, you know what I mean? It helped me realize that it was a weird, it was a kind of a weird self-reflective thing because, you know, we all grew up in the church too, but in a way, like, I question a lot of, you know, what I grew up with and like what my parents told me to believe and why I viewed people differently because they weren't going to the church, right? And that book really helped me break out of that where I saw, you know, like, people as people, just as they we should be seeing people as people, right? But at that age, it was like, it was different and it was hard, but yeah. It's it's interesting how a book like that can can really sh- shift something so simple, but that like fundamentally echoed into my life. And then because of that change, like you know, when I got to university and when I meet new people now, it's like it's it's compounded on top of that foundation of of like that perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Do you remember like there was like one thing that you remember or that like sticks out on your mind? It was it was like the whole thing with um like him questioning why people at church always hang out with like why is it why are they all christians why are why are um christian people only hang out with christian people you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. if the calling is to to talk about god and share the good word we Mm -hmm. should be surrounding ourselves with people that are not cookie cutter Mm -hmm. christians people that are coming Mm -hmm. from different paths of life hard hard backgrounds you know like broken families you know broken people we should be surrounding ourselves with those kinds of people and and really being like close and vulnerable with them and yeah. I was like, that's so true. Like, why are we doing this? Like, why is why is the church and why is the religion constructed itself to be self-guarding when we should mm-hmm. be outreaching? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Things like that. And like, I think that mentality also shifted me to question a lot of other things, not only with religion, but mm-hmm. just like other things in life, right? Like, why are, why are we supposed to do that? Why can't we do it mm-hmm. better? Why can't we do it differently? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the two books, Blue Like Jazz and Searching for God Knows What, um, I definitely recommend those are really good books. Because people yeah. love to be in a community. Yeah, for sure. And community is so important. Or some kind of belonging. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. But yeah, I agree with that. Because like, my parents are Christians. And you know, like the first question they'll ask if I like, if I'm dating a girl is like, oh, like, is she Christian or she whatever. Christian? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know. There's something fundamentally wrong. Like there's not, the, like I agree with a lot of the lessons that, christianity teaches yeah but i feel like it's just like segregating people based off that and i feel like there's something fundamentally wrong about that yeah yeah just gotta love everybody man we're all people yeah but uh that's uh yep. that's not necessarily the case tough. in this world <laughs> yeah. tough world out there you know yeah for sure <laughs> about like a a movie or something in pop culture have you guys watched the movie uh joker the new one yes. with joaquin phoenix yeah 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 that dude was, i watched that movie nice twice movie. but like damn that shit hits hard because like how so that was incredible oh you it, haven't watched it it was a good movie oh yeah no i watched it it was a good movie i'm just wondering it just yeah. talks about like impacted like the mental health and um yeah you know it's just like if, if i put myself in that situation like I don't know if I would have behaved any differently than he 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 would, and you know there are people in this world that are literally just going to do that, and um, I don't know. It was just and like you know how mental health is just like a problem that's been it's always been there, but I think it's getting a lot more attention. I have like an Illuminati like theory about this. You know how you know why there's so many like mental health problems and we're not fixing it. Why? Because there's no money in it, like, what's like no one makes money off of people getting better at mental illness. So, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's tied in. Yeah, there should be a lot more resources allocated to mental health and stuff like that. Yeah, but there isn't. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. I believe there's no money in it. There's like not. There's not enough. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. There's no profit. So, it's sad. It's just. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Even in the movie. They uh, cut off his like, um, like counseling because they didn't have enough funds to, you know, yeah, to help out. Yep. Makes sense. So, yeah. Know. The interesting thing about that thing about that movie was like, yeah, like you you empathize and sympathize with so much of like the the main character that you're kind of you know the whole thing I think is really interesting. It's like a dynamic between like 
is he the villain or did society create the villain kind of thing right it's like mm-hmm. like you said any one of us in that situation would have probably reacted and and played out the same way that he did right like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was almost like it's like it's not his fault but then it is his mm-hmm. fault i think that's like the whole dynamic i loved about that movie it's like it's constantly kind of playing between those things where you're yeah, like, yeah. you're like, I don't know what to believe anymore. Know. Like, you know, am I the villain <laughs> and shit like that? Yeah. It's like that. It's like that. Like he's a villain, right? Technically, because he killed people. Yeah. But you want to sympathize with him yeah. because, and I saw this on a YouTube video, so I'm just quoting. <laughs> but um, basically, like we want to cheer for Joker, right? In that movie, yeah, definitely, because he exposes his um weaknesses mm-hmm. throughout the movie, mm-hmm. and that's why people want to sympathize sympathize with. Mm-hmm um joker because of those like i guess you could say character development yeah even though he's a villain right yeah. so yeah i think that weakness him being vulnerable kind of kind of gives uh, the audience like us to like uh, be attracted to the character yeah, like feel connected in that way yeah feel connected exactly for sure so, i understand that yeah his life was just fucked dude yeah yeah it's I can't remember. Uh, was he? Was his dad Bruce Wayne? Joker. So, so, or was it? There's something about his mom, like because he, he killed a couple her. Theories. So it's like there's like, but it's also like different universes. Like so in some universes, Batman is Joker's brother, I think, and in some universes, they're completely separate. Mm. And I think this. I don't know what universe this is, <laughs> but I can't keep up with yeah. super, like cartoon. Uh, what is it? Um, cartoon. DC? I mean, uh, comic comic <laughs> yeah, stories. Yeah. To fit things, bro. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Joker's a. It's a good movie. Definitely yeah, solid it's, movie. It's a really good movie. Yeah. But it was dark for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely heavy. Um. I watched a movie in high school that has actually shifted a lot of my perspective with dating. Is a movie called Five Hundred Days of Summer. Um, oh, I've watched that. It's kind of like a chick flick That's type, yeah, coming yeah. of age type movie. Cool. Yeah. You guys know the story, right? Basically, it's like a guy and a girl, and then the girl's like, oh, I don't want to, like, you know, I'm not looking for anything serious. And the guy's like, oh, me too. I'm in love with Summer. And the guy falls in love, and then she's like, oh, it's over now. But Mm. he's like, how could you do that to me? And then she was like, but I was honest with you. Like, I didn't Mm -hmm. want anything serious. I hate Summer. Mm -hmm. Like that. I fell in love at the end. Yeah, I know. That movie, bro, I watched it, like, when I was in, like, high school. That Mm -hmm. was before I dated anyone, right? But it really broke my romanticized idea about, like, relationships and i was Mm. like man this is like fuck like this could happen Mm -hmm. yeah so it kind of gave me a bit more of a realistic and almost like a jaded perspective with relationships a little Mm. bit i think going into it like the the one thing that kind of that instilled in me was like i don't want to it's like i need to define those moments like when like i want to be in a relationship or like when i'm just looking for casual or whatever so for me that meant defining what like love meant which sounds cheesy but like i made a pact to myself that i was like i'm not gonna say i love you to anyone unless i feel like i can commit to that as a decision as opposed to an emotion Mm. and i've lived Mm. by that ever since and interesting i haven't told anyone i love them yet because i felt like i wasn't able to commit to that decision mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not even as a joke though not even well, i mean as a well, as a joke well not really i've had instances where like <laughs> girlfriends would get mad and then they'd be like say it and I'd, I'd say it but then they're like you don't mean it and i'm like i'm sorry <laughs> but like it's just different for me mm-hmm. true yeah. it's not a word you use lightly exactly that's my whole yeah. thing definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but like the mo- also it's like i feel like people say it out of emotion they're like they're feeling in love you know they're feeling infatuated and they're so yeah. emotionally invested that they're like oh i really love this person but then it's also like my whole thing is like but if something happened like if they made a mistake would you be willing to overlook it mm-hmm. like my yeah, thing is unconditional if i love someone they would like, even if they fuck up like i would have to be willing to work through it you know what i mean mm-hmm. like yeah. if i'm dating her and she cheats on me and i'm like it's over i don't think i really loved her you know what i mean mm. Like, that's my thing. Like, that's my kind of, like, line where I'm, like... Well, I mean, if she cheats on me, Wait, she probably blocks yeah. the streets. But my thing is, yeah, like... Yeah. You know what I mean, though? It's, like, the fact that I'm so easy to cut it out. Yeah. Like, yeah. that just tells me, then like... It's it more than an emotion for me. It's, like, mm-hmm. a decision, right? Mm-hmm. And True. 500 days of summer instilled that <laughs> in a very young Josh. Interesting. But I feel like if they cheated on you, 
I don't think you yeah, would okay, have that to was cover like a, that up. That's like a bad example. But like, you know what I mean? Like, mm, mistake. Mm. Cheating, it should be gone anyways. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I think, I feel like everyone has a different tolerance, like threshold, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. like a, a different level of like when they do say it. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in a similar boat too. I don't, I don't want to jump in and say it if I, if my gut is telling me that that i'm not ready i feel like you'll, you'll just know when to say it yeah yeah but i definitely wouldn't like rush myself into saying it it's like i uh, i uh, i love you <laughs> it's like you know in harry potter where the slugs yeah. come out of ron's mouth <laughs> sucks. do you know matrix in the first oh. <laughs> movie when he's interrogated yeah. he's like <laughs> <laughs> he can't open his mouth <laughs> that'd be me sorry yeah but like it's, 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 it's always hard when like the other person catches like that feeling first yeah. but then you're not ready yeah. yet and then you just have this, this awkward situation bro have you ever had that scenario where like a girl said i love you but like obviously you weren't reciprocating the same feeling yeah i've been there yeah yeah what'd you say brian, brian you go first <laughs> <laughs> well like she she didn't verbally say it but like she oh, was um saying, okay like expecting for us to be at that level kind of thing mm. like i knew she wanted to say it and she was kind of like waiting for me to say it yeah but i just oh. i just didn't go through with it because true i had a case where the girl literally said i love you yeah like literally in front of like and i didn't know what to say so i was like oh okay <laughs> thanks <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I think I said something along the like, lines. I love oh, myself said, too. Along the lines of that. You said me too. I think I said something along the lines. Of that. Oh. I was like, oh, me too. I didn't say I love you for sure. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. No, I've gotten like, yeah, I've gotten like, I love you, and I've also gotten like, do you love me? <laughs> do <laughs> or they, you they love ask yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, but then, yeah, like again, I I tell them exactly what I just said. Like, I say, <laughs> I say thanks, but I say, um, <laughs> thanks, bye. But for me, like, love is more than like a decision than an emotion and they hate it they oh all my like yeah, they all hated it of course and uh and then that yeah and then that like just sets the tone and then they're like wow so you'll never love me unless we get I married know. i'm like it's so i'm annoying. like that but that's kind of that's kind of where my head's at with it you know like i probably yeah. feel the same things you feel like emotionally but mm-hmm. i just choose not to call that love mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and then i feel like it would be just as special like even more special when you do say it and if they're like kind of patient with it yeah like it'll hit different but then also yeah but then sometimes it just never happens and then you know yeah <laughs> yeah anyways but this yeah. is becoming a relationship uh, episode no but it's it's funny how like i got that from like a movie and if yeah, you haven't yeah, watched yeah. it i highly recommend it it's like one of my favorite i've watched that movie maybe like 25 times damn in my I, life i watched that movie like, days of summer it. 500 days of summer i used to watch it like once every three months Oh, yeah. But the soundtrack is also really good. Who did you dirty, Song. bro? Sorry. <laughs> Who? Who did you dirty, bro? Actually, no. There then there was one instance where that situation happened to me, where I was meeting this person and she was like, "I don't want anything serious." I was like, "Oh, me neither." And then I caught feelings, and mm. then she pulled out, and then I was mm. fucking destroyed. So mm. you're in the midsummer night dream or whatever. It I was, was like, I was 500 days. I was in the 500 yeah, yeah. days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, I was trapped. <laughs> Yeah. chopping the 500 days yeah. sorry well i i got another one yeah um so my first one was about the like the manly like masculine courage mm-hmm. like, you know all that shit yeah my second one is more about like development like more so development like someone coming from literally the bottom where they came from nothing yeah. to becoming like a beast yeah and i think a really good example of this and this is anime again is Naruto. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, if for those that didn't watch Naruto, um, it's like the main Naruto show is done, so I'm just gonna spoil it. It's been over for like two years. Yeah, so. yeah, I think it's fine. like Naruto came out like as a little like as a boy who basically was like a prankster. Like no one liked him. Mm-hmm. He was a loser, and in the end, he becomes like the fucking Hokage of the vi- village, which means yeah. like he's like the president. Just think about it like that, <laughs> like the strongest strongest ninja. Yeah, basically. And like the progression of that, the like the grit and like the work that he put in, mm-hmm. yeah, you see it right because you're watching the anime, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then him like overcoming like shit that no one believed that, except him that 
could over- overcome mm-hmm. yeah it's like so inspirational mm-hmm. for me and like for me like getting these type of like, examples in my life really helped me like in my life personally right yeah coming through like hardship it's like if this guy could do it why can't i kind of mentality <laughs> mm-hmm. obviously if it's enemy but like i i get i get <laughs> if experience. naruto can fly i can yeah. fly <laughs> Like obviously, I get um, examples from other sources too. No, of course, I'm just yeah. Like the general idea is like, if this guy, if this person yeah. could overcome hardships, it's like, why can't I? Kind of thing. Yeah. And like, I think I built that foundation ever since like when I was young, mm-hmm. when I grinded on Maple Story, right? <laughs> like Sudden Attack, just the like, grinding to become better, whatever the best thing I could be, right? Yeah, for sure. And then coupling that with like enemies, like character. Because anime is a lot about character development. Yeah. Like, a lot of it. So, I think those two really shaped my, like, um, not fire, but will to not quit and yeah. just keep on of course. continuing in life. It's like your drive. Yeah, I guess you could say drive and determination. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, like, yeah, like like I said, like, animes, games, although, it, like, to some people, it might they might take it lightly. For me personally, it was very impactful in just my perspective of life. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I might have to check out some of these animes. I mean, they're all very popular animes, right? Yeah. It's just the way I portrayed it is very, like, moshiso. Yeah. It's cool. And, like, it's fun, obviously. And just, like, the message that I get, for me personally, again, it's just very, it, for me, it was positive. Yeah. yeah. And, I think it shaped me to the person that I am now. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of like pretty much real correlation between that and like real life too. Cause like life is not always just like smooth, you know, sailing. Yeah. There'll be a lot of setbacks and, you know, a lot of obstacles, but like it's the one that usually persevere are the ones that like end up on top. Yeah. Yo. And like anime does a like a really good job of those type of obstacles where like, some really important character dies, right? Yeah. And it's, like, so sad. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, like, you see how these main characters overcome it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, like, that, like, uh, like you can l- learn from that yeah. as well, right? It's mm-hmm. literally, so, yeah, yeah so, real life. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, man, sad, but I appreciate it. That's why I love anime. Like, I don't, I try not to express it because of the ne- negative, somewhat negative connotations, right? Nah, <laughs> but you but, should um, live your best life, bro. Be the weeb no, that no, you I, are. I, be yeah, the best but, weeb you, know, you can be. Just, <laughs> there's moderation, right? So, you know, saying sorry. Just, just don't Anyways, yeah. Naruto run around in public yeah. when you're with me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That I, shit's like inspirational. No, none of those gang sign, anime, two hand, ninja, whatever. <laughs> Damn. But anyways, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, that's cool yes. though, man. Everyone gets their sources of like inspiration and motivation in different ways. Mm-hmm. yeah for sure but yeah oh sorry and one more to add i think brian could relate to this as well and it's not really so much like pop culture but i think like i watch a lot of like basketball sh- stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a lot of basketball players like if you don't see the work that they put in and you just see their like interviews mm-hmm. they seem super cocky right yeah. like super calm conf- mm-hmm. but like i understood especially like, while going through the interview phases recently mm-hmm um that if you put enough work on something mm-hmm. like you have all the first of all you have all the right to say that you're good at something mm-hmm. and two like because you practice something for so many times in so long like i could see where the confidence comes from yeah and like now i died i see it like i respect it now you know what i mean yeah. sure so like that i learned something from as well like because like players like Russell Westbrook, like maybe like three years ago, maybe I would have been like, "Yo, this guy's like super cocky." Whoa, what are you talking? Because I didn't follow like the work ethics that much mm-hmm. back then. Mm-hmm. But now it's like I I focus a little bit more on like their because there's workout videos online, right? Mm-hmm. And if you see it, it's like what this player goes through in each day of workout, right? Yeah, it's like oh shit, like that's crazy. Yeah, and like yeah, these dude. are the things that I don't see. And like a lot of work are, is done behind the scenes, and yeah. for them to be confident offline, like online when they're having interviews, like mm-hmm. respect and like I applaud you, and yeah. like I want to become like that too. Yeah. So yeah, 
And I feel like for an athlete at that level to be at that stage, you have to have like that kind of attitude that like, I am the best, like, yeah, no, but I'm, what I'm saying is they are the best because they put in so much work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That part, that work part and like that work part is validated by their performance, yeah. confidence and yeah. Cause like I saw like the that, so. interview with like LaMelo <clears throat> And yeah. he's like, oh, yeah. like, like, let's say you're put in a room with like Michael Jordan or Kobe. Like, who do you think's gonna win? Like a one on one. And like, we all know that Melo's right. not gonna win. <laughs> yeah. But but he's still like, oh, like I think I'm the best passer. I'm the best like player right. in the league. So it's like, yeah, like that level of like self belief and self confidence. I think plays exactly. a huge like role in like yeah. You know. And I'm sure he put a lot of work into it too. So yeah. that's why he's confident. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But that being said. Just, we all, all know respect. Michael Jordan's gonna sweep him. Sorry, yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, but even for someone who doesn't watch basketball, like myself, like even watching the Last Dance documentary, right? It's like right, yeah. seeing all the hurdles and the ups and the downs mm-hmm. that Michael Jordan went through, and obviously he's just naturally gifted. Like he's just fucking sick. But yeah, that was yeah. it. Was also because of his drive and his his like willingness to become the best and nothing but the best that really shone through in in his games and. Yeah, his performance and stuff like that, right? So, yeah. yeah. I really like the quote where he said, um, I don't tell people, like on his team, yeah. I don't tell people what to do unless I do it. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. I really like like that quote. It's like he's trying to push this team forward. Yeah. But at the same time, he wouldn't, like, he's not being a hypocrite. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, he'll, he'll be the leader. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, he's a goat, yo. And like even like he's past teammates and stuff like that were like, oh, like Michael Jordan was like it was his team, it was his way or the highway or whatever, right? But also it's like yeah, but it's also because he was fucking the best. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah, he was, it was justified yeah. in in a lot of ways. Right. Yeah. I'm sure not a lot of of his teammates or people can handle that kind of pressure. But like in the long yeah. run, when you look at it from like outside in, like six yeah. championships, like. You don't and achieve like that short amount of time too. Yeah, like you don't achieve that kind of success unless right. you have that someone yeah, like right. like that in your in yeah. your side. You know, you won't get that being like, oh, I think we can work together, guys, and you yeah, know, maybe don't be so, maybe not better next time. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, that's why, like, I don't know. I feel like learning and like being able to like learn and pick up these things and knowing that th- there's always like room for you to improve is is so important. Yeah. Like another book that I read was like Rich Dad Poor Dad. Mm-hmm. Classic, classic. <laughs> yeah, famous, famous book. Classic, but like, yeah, everyone knows what that book is, right? But like, I can see why it's so like, 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 like life changing because, like, none of the shit in that book they teach you in school. Mm-hmm. So for context, I actually didn't read it. Can you explain a little bit about it? Uh, it's like it's just learning about financial literacy and and, mm-hmm. and oh, how sure. people um you know, get out of the rat race, so to say, you know, people, True. you know, just work to make money, but they don't think about yeah. other ways to like make more money so that, you know, you get out of that rat right. race and, and things like that. But, right, right. you know, just talking about like assets and liabilities, you know, talking about the stock market and, and just all those things mm-hmm. that they don't teach you in school. Yeah. True. Um, yeah, I see. But I don't know, it's just um, one of those really important books that taught me about like finances and because that's that's what we want you know we all want like we all want to live that good life you know we don't want to worry about money and and things like that but Mm -hmm. i feel like the sooner you realize that and the sooner you like act upon it then you know there's a better chance of you being able to you know achieve achieve what you want what you want to achieve in terms of financial independence and things like that yeah yeah definitely you know what they say with more knowledge comes more power sorry you know what they say right with more power comes more responsibility sorry spider-man i'm down <laughs> i'm down but man I, I love that though man there's just every day like learning something and getting better and you know like just not being stagnant i feel like there's always things that we can improve on whether oh, it be in yeah. relationships whether it be in finance or job careers you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. health you know I don't know. That's 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 the fun, you know. That's the, a lot of people want to get to that end end stage, but you know, like it's all about the journey, baby. It's all about the journey. That's what all the successful people say. You know, it's it's not about the destination. It's like it's, it's about the marathon, journey. Yeah, yeah, not a sprint. Yeah, 
So sorry. Yeah. I'm down. I I I vibe to the rule. Like I've heard a lot of variations of these kind of like this or that. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, I think I resonate mostly with not a marathon or it is a marathon not a sprint and if i try to yeah. think of it like my life goals are like that yeah. personally it's just easier for me to yeah. digest i think tony robbins um he once said like a lot like a lot of people overestimate what they can what they can do in a year right. but underestimate what they can do in, in, in a decade or two yeah yeah also, I, there's another quote that I like to refer by. It's like, stay hungry and stay foolish. Yeah. Stay so hungry and stay foolish. Yeah, yeah. So like, be hungry enough to try different opportunities, mm-hmm. but stay foolish to not dream big enough. Mm-hmm. Like, dream big enough. Like, dream really big. Yeah, stay foolish to like, not yeah, be too big. realistic. Like, yeah. Yeah, have big dreams. Mm. Yeah, like have big dreams, basically. Yeah. So, but stupid enough to try it out, you know? Yeah. But they're smart enough to like, not do anything stupid. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, athletic enough to actually get to that goal. Sorry. Yeah. And then like <laughs> funny enough to actually make people laugh. <laughs> and then be tall enough to actually make it. In. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to try to make to it Ryan? to the NBA by next year at age 27. <laughs> and then be, be cute enough that you get uh, drafted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Uber, what? What's up? <laughs> All right, guys, we just were babbling about some pop culture books and movies and some lessons that we learned from, from these yeah, resources. Good. Yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed our little rant. And, uh, you know, if you guys resonated with anything that we said, please let us make sure to let us know. And, uh, yeah. If you haven't followed our social media page, make sure to follow us on our Instagram at the Young and Finch. And uh, you'll get a little bit more of some exclusive footage and behind the scenes and uh if you want to get to know us more you can find us there and uh don't forget to follow us on your podcast sources you can find us on spotify podcast apple podcast google podcast wherever you get your podcasts and uh yeah feel free to check out our youtube channel uh it's in the link in our bio on our instagram page and uh, you can see some of our other content that we do there yes sir and you already know what we're gonna say we'll uh, catch you guys next time and have a great rest of the week Bye bye. See ya. See ya. Peace. Oh my god, my dog's on my Wait one second. <laughs> Keep recording. Yeah. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Please. Yeah. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to Young and Finch. This is episode 36. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about some. 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 Some.